Thank you, Debbie. I'm so happy that Laura was here this morning, and I want to make a commitment right here. Laura, you are in my district in Raven County. I hear you. I will never take a penny from anybody who wants to tell me which gun laws they want. It's Laura's life on the line, not their lives. Because let me tell you, a few weeks ago, I went to qualify and pay some money down at the Capitol to run for Congress in the 9th District. And I've heard from so many people who work at the Capitol, we can't have gun-free zones. They're too dangerous. And I saw a strange sign on the way into the Capitol where they work. It's red and it's big. It says, no weapons allowed here. And I walked in around these people who say it's terrifying to work in a gun-free zone and they looked like they felt safe in their gun-free zone that they made for themselves. Those same people have written laws not for you and not for me. They have written laws where it counts for them. They're counting money. They're counting votes. While our schools and our hospitals are counting bodies. What is it that we're going to say counts in this nation? Are we going to say that it's more important for your hobby to have to reload your magazine than it is for my kids to sit safely in their school building? No. I want to tell you a story today from a book named Genesis. It's about the creation of the world from the Jewish point of view. In the book of Genesis, Adam and Eve were expelled from paradise, the garden. And as soon as they were kicked out of the garden, they had a a couple of children. And they were so happy because they were made in the image of the Creator, a creative God. And they realized that just like the God that created them, they were made to create, to till the earth, to make things, to make a better world for their children. One day, two brothers went out into the field, Cain and Abel. And Cain, out in the field, struck his brother down. And God called to Cain and said, Where is your brother? And Cain said, Am I my brother's keeper? It is a question we are still asking today. And here is what God said to Cain. He said, The blood of your brother is calling out to me from the ground. And today, those students who died in Parkland and the students who die every day from gun violence, their blood is crying out to God and to us for justice and common sense laws. There are things that we can do. This is not a hurricane or an earthquake. This is a man-made disaster. When are we going to realize that we were made to create, not to destroy? I refuse to believe that the symbol of this country is a gun. I own guns. I grew up around guns. My daddy taught me that it only takes one mistake with a gun. That's all it takes is one mistake. Today, gun violence is the third leading cause of death for children in this country. I am told that we live in a pro-life state. Apparently, some lives matter less because there are things that we can do to save lives. And I'll tell you, what is it going to take for us to say in 20 years, no longer are we Cain's country. No longer are we going to surrender our future to random violence. What is it going to take? In Vietnam, yes, vote, show up. This is what it takes. In Vietnam, soldiers, American soldiers had to watch out in the jungles 
for trip wires. In Iraq, American soldiers had to watch out for IEDs. And now, in our schools, in our churches, in our clubs, everywhere, it could happen today. We have to watch out. We are only one impulse away from the next cruise, the next Lanza, and our leaders have done nothing. Nothing. Here is what I propose. Number one, universal background checks on every single transfer of every single firearm in this country. We already have a background check system. Let's make it universal. Included in that should be a flagging system so that if somebody says on YouTube, I want to grow up and be a professional school shooter, we can flag that person and when they go to buy a gun, it says no sale. Number two, we have got to make it so that children are safe in their homes and that our other children are safe in their schools. We need to make it in law that if you buy a firearm and you have children in your home, you must also at the very least buy a trigger lock and sign a commitment, a contract, not with the government, but with your children, that you will keep that gun secure from your toddler. Because we've heard about the Parkland victims. Let me read you a few others that we haven't heard about that just happened last year. April 26th, a three-year-old boy shot and killed himself after finding a gun in his Dallas, Georgia home. March 11th, an 11-year-old in Norcross was killed while playing with a gun in the garage with his friends. March 21st, a two-year-old boy shot himself in the abdomen in Lithonia after finding a gun in his mother's purse. January 4th, a two-year-old was shot by another friend while playing outside in LaGrange. October 27th, a two-year-old boy grabbed his dad's gun off the bed in Ackworth and shot himself in the head. He was killed. October 19th, an eight-year-old girl was killed in Dallas after a gun fell while her mom was brushing her hair. November 11th, a two-year-old was killed when he accidentally shot himself at a home in Jackson. On November 28th, a six-year-old was shot and killed herself in Atlanta with a gun she found in the sofa cushions. And these are the ones that we've heard about. There will be another and another and another until we do something. Keep your gun secure from your children. They tell me that any gun, any law about guns takes away their rights. Well, let me tell you what tyranny looks like. Tyranny is when power is centered in one person. And right now, we have a tyranny where one individual can go and purchase a weapon and have the power over life and death over everybody in their vicinity. That is tyranny. The victims in Parkland can tell you what tyranny looks like. These children who couldn't even talk about politics yet can tell you what tyranny looks like. And their blood is crying out from the ground for action. And that brings me to my third point. There are certain weapons that we've already said are too dangerous for public consumption. We do not allow the sale of bombs. We do not allow the sale of machine guns. And the sale of weapons with unlimited capacity and detachable magazines are too dangerous for public consumption. Cruz could not have killed as many people as he did if he had to reload. And I don't care if you tell me that having to reload is taking away your Second Amendment rights. By God, if it saves a children's life, you're going to have to reload. There are things that we can do. Stop being paralyzed. It is time for our nation to rise up because we believe in common sense gun laws. 92% of Americans who can't even agree on which way is up anymore agree on universal background checks. It is time to get past some of our other differences and find what we do have common ground on. So I call to you today, you're already doing most of the job, showing up, look at this, in beautiful Clarks, 
Louisville, Georgia, just down the street from where I was born in Demarest. We have shown up in a difficult place, in a difficult area, where they told us, you can never have people support gun laws in this area. Well, we have faith. And all it takes, according to my favorite teacher, is a mustard seed of faith. And we can move mountains. Help me get up to Washington, fight the corruption of the NRA and politicians that live in fear of their lobbyists, Help me change gun laws in America and save lives. God bless. God bless you.